Good morning, YouTube. Let's rise and shine. Give thanks to be alive another day. Yes, yes, yes. Um, well, here we are, episode 33. We're going to kick it back and go back a little bit to the Bear Skull Commission. This will be the fifth and final installment. Um, here right now I'm showing you where we left off before to kind of refresh your memory. This is um, the end of the Bear Skull um, Part 4. In this episode, we are going to be revealing uh, the name and the final image of this here, the Bear Skull Commission. The customers have received their painting and it is hanging proudly in their home. I'm happy, despite a lot of craziness, to get it there. Um, I'm glad that it finally made it. Um, I'll tell you about it in just a little bit. Um, but again, just to see where we were when we were finished, and now let's go ahead and run the intro. Okay, YouTube, welcome to the studio. Um, this is where we are now. Um, as you can see, um, I've done quite a bit of work since the last time you guys got to see it. Um, and today I will just be pretty much doing the last little finishing touches. Um, so I'm going to be pretty much jumping all around the, the painting today and... Um, when it comes to something like this, I tend to just kind of go uh, counterclockwise. And um, I'm starting off here with the moon and I will be pretty much ending with the moon. Um, what can I say? Um, this, this painting is uh, a very fun painting to do. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the whole process. Um, it, it inspired me because, um, although, you know, in doing the idea of Velvet Vanitas, um, I certainly, um, was interested in painting different animal skulls and, and putting them in, in different, um, types of settings. Um, but in this, um, I was basically given, you know, the idea to do a bear skull and mushrooms that it kind of was just those two you know things and in my head i automatically just kind of went to the wilderness you know i i just i just thought thought of foraging and just you know the idea of you know that moment out there in the wilderness where you might be foraging for mushrooms and you might happen to come across this uh, grizzly bear skull. Um, that was just the feeling anyway. Um, certainly, um, this was just something that was, it was just really fun for me. I enjoyed the, uh, the use of just different, you know, fall autumn colors um the the feeling about this natural vanitas is that you know there's fruit um there's death and decay in the sense that there are you know twigs that are there um there are you know pine cones and fallen leaves that are rotting the mushrooms are coming out of this and turning death into life, so to speak. You know what I mean? Um, there's other living entities in this picture. There are snails. I like when I do a vanitas, I like to put something that is, you know, of course, in this image, the 
the mushrooms are alive, but I like to put something in there that's also living, not just like the, the dead bear, you know, and I thought that because, you know, this bear is, you know, it's a grizzly bear, and so it's like huge, you know what I mean? 1500 pound type thing and i just thought you know i remember on on the land we had in texas a little floorsville land we had out there that if you dug around in the dirt you could find these little bitty snail shells these tiny little shells and i just thought man those are you know tiny sh snails you know what i mean and i i just thought that it'd be kind of cool the juxtaposition of this huge bear and this tiny little snail um and to be honest i debated for quite a while as to whether or not i was going to put certain things in this image because um you you, you you want it to be right you know and you don't want to make a mistake and you don't want to put something in there that is going to detract from the image and the thing that you know i was having the most difficulty with on in, in all honesty was the moon um i wasn't sure whether or not to put a moon in the picture um because in doing so, I felt like then I might need to put stars, you know, and then clouds, and then then what? Then then I gotta put like a mountain scene, some trees, you know, a river. I gotta take it all the way out there to where you know Bob Ross lives. You know what I mean? And I didn't necessarily want to really do that. Um, and so one of the last things that i painted on this was the moon and it was because you know i just really wasn't sure about it and for a while i had this um circular uh piece of cardboard that was white that comes in the paint can tops and you know i took a piece of tape stuck it on there put it on there and i hung it up there while i painted it um just to just kind of get used to it visually to see if there was something that i would actually like um, and so that was really the only thing that I really debated on was whether or not to actually put the moon um, Because the thing about it is is that I, I'm a stickler for some things and I just felt like um, You know if there's a moon then I feel like I gotta put something else You know and when I finally decided that I, I didn't need to do that that the moon would be fine by itself then I was good with it um, and then I did some research and found out that mushrooms like the full moon and so it was even better you know what I mean so um, then not only was it something that visually I found that I I liked it served a purpose and um, it because of the nature of it being velvet you know it's it automatically sort of being in nature you know it makes it automatically a nighttime picture you know what i mean and then it just goes into all of those things all those sentiments about the end of your life so to speak um the interesting thing about this is that this is not a winter picture as it were where you know you think of life being like in the winter or whatever um this is um more of an autumn autumn type painting um the colors and stuff like that um and the reality of it is is that for me it's just to me that's just one of the more colorful times of the year um so i finished this painting and i shipped it out to my my one of my very best friends um zach i love you so much man um what can I say? I met Zach back in, man, was it 92? Man, that seems like such a long, that's like what? So long, it's like 40, fucking 50, 100 years ago I met this dude, Zach. Um, we worked in a movie theater together and he was a big, giant, white dude with no hair. And he was very scary looking. But then I was a big, giant, black dude with no hair and I was also very scary looking. And for some reason or another, they always put us on the same schedule doing Usher type stuff because we were big old scary dudes. And um, 
we just became good friends. Um, eventually, through life and things, um, we would live together from time to time because my wife was nuts at the time, and I would always find myself getting kicked out and needing a couch to crash on. Um, and we would, we, and sometimes, man, we we lived together for quite a while. You know what I mean? Um, so much of who I am today is because of having met this dude. He is most certainly one of the greatest friends I've ever had in my life, um, and I love him more than I could. I love and you know just regular people. This dude is is really, 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 really my brother, um, and it, it's it was just an honor to to paint this for him. Um, he is currently living way, way, way far away from me on the other side of the country. And so in shipping this from where I am in New Jersey to Arizona, um, I ship the postal service like I usually do. My mom, ma, my mom, ma, my father and my sister worked for the postal service back in the day. And I've always loved, you know, the postal service, you know, there's always a place in my heart for it, you know? Um, and I was always cool with the letter carriers and that kind of thing. Um, but lately as an artist here, it has been difficult using them shipping art to different places. Um, it usually takes three or four extra days longer than it should. It's usually a, just a, a problem dealing with them. Like, I don't know what happened to service, but, um, this painting, I shipped it out from my little old town in New Jersey. And then we found when it was supposed to be delivered on Monday the 19th of September that it was actually in Puerto Rico and I don't know if you knew what was going on at the time Puerto Rico was in the middle of a hurricane so there there was already a problem because they weren't really up from the last hurricane and so now this painting is in Puerto Rico for some reason um, and so that began a fiasco of dealing with the postal service to get things situated. Um, I did a lot of cussing, screaming, talking to people on the phone because, you know, this was not supposed to be the case. And then eventually it actually showed up. And when it did show up, the postal carrier told them that they could not take their package because there was postage due on it of over $80. Now I paid to have it shipped. And so somehow when I saw the photograph of it, the postal, the postage was missing. So who knows where this postage is, but I had the receipt. It was a big issue. I ended up talking to the postal guy from their town and they ended up waiving the fees or whatever. And they finally got their painting today. Today is Friday. No, today is Thursday. See, I'm off from my days. September 22nd, the first day of autumn. So, wonderfully enough, they get this wonderful autumn painting today. So, somehow or another, even though life can be crazy, um, things seemingly work themselves out. Um, but, um, for the record, I am no longer going to be working with the Postal Service because they have been a problem literally for the last three years. Every time I send something out, it is an issue. This time, they send my art to Puerto Rico. I can't even go to Puerto Rico. I would love to go to Puerto Rico. Do you have any idea that they got, ugh. Anyway, this is the finished picture, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. I appreciate you guys. Let me go ahead and show you now. Um, the studio finished picture the painting is called sleeping wilderness and here it is finally complete in studio where you can kind of see it in the best light there's a good image of the moon i tried to make that look as much like the moon that we look at every night um, there's a good look at the fall leaves and some bear berries. I think those are called knickknack or something like that. I don't know for sure. There's an image of a tiny little snail on his nose. There's there's a whole bunch of them throughout the painting. Um, there's some mushrooms there. There's a couple morels. Those morels represent my friend Zach and his woman, and that inky one is me. 
Um, there's a lot of meaning in this painting hidden throughout. And here it is, um, hanging where it is isolated, where you can see the whole image. Unfortunately, um, the lighting in this room is not as good, but I like it because for some strange reason, if you happen to see, you know, the moon and, and those particular shrooms kind of give it a, a starry night like look to it. I think it's nice. Um, I really hope that you enjoyed this. I really hope that they enjoyed this. I love them. Zach and Samantha, you guys, man, all my best. Art by Cavo. Thank you very much for this commission. Thank you guys very much. Here's my friend looking like Grizzly Adams. Yeah, this is the painting there in their house when they received it. And this is my Grizzly Adams brother there with it hanging on the wall. Um, Sam and Zach, I wish you the best. Thank you very much. I'm out. Right about. Ouch! Watch where you're poking that, mister! Assimilate, algorithm, resistance, is futile.